What's going on guys? Merrick here back with another Dragon Ball Super Deck Profile. Yesterday we gave you some stupid Vegeta goodness and we're gonna go ahead and continue the love for Vegeta because always coming in second place has to suck. So we're gonna give him a little bit more of our support with some more deck profiles. This time around we're using the old Draftbox 1 Majin Vegeta leader. I always liked this leader. I thought he had a decent... I thought he had a pretty decent ability, it's just losing card advantage really sucks. Uh, but his activate main is once per turn you choose a card in your hand, put it in the drop area, he gets plus 5,000 in critical. Uh, it is kind of nice that he's a draw 2 on Awaken. Getting the 2 energy is always a good thing, but since this leader is always uh, pitching a card to get that boost in critical, the draw 2 is pretty essential. Then we've got Vile Strike Dark Prince Vegeta. He has the same exact activate main, and he draws a card when he attacks. So, nothing too different here, but he is pretty powerful, and getting the attack boost plus the critical is always nice. So, the first card in the deck is 4 Planet M2. It's a field card that lets you switch it to rest mode, and you get to choose a, your opponent's leader or a battle card. It's minus 5,000 for the duration of the battle. This card goes well. Uh, with the leader's ability, you reduce your p opponent's leader, and they're going to have to combo a lot more to be able to get around that crit. It's not the most ideal thing, because it is only once per turn, but with all the crit that goes on in this deck, you're going to be able to take advantage of that at least once. So, to me, that is the ideal turn one play. If you really wanted to, if you wanted another option, you could also go with uh, Intensifying Power Trunks. I had this in the deck... Uh, I chose Planet M2 just because I felt like it might give you a little bit more, a little bit more of a, uh, might give you a little more advantage uh, when you're going to push for a lot of damage. Now this Trunks is not bad either. Uh, when he attacks, you choose a card in your life, add it to your hand. He gets plus ten thousand in critical, so fifteen in critical. I mean, ideally, I guess you could, if you played this on your first turn and you had the leader, you'd have two fifteen thousand crits coming at you, but. I don't know. To me, it's it's kind of one or the other, and I felt like M2 might be a little bit better. But you guys can feel like you can correct me if uh, if you feel I'm wrong on that one. Uh, however, that would be a nice card to play in this deck because we do also run four Grand Tour Spaceship. You get to look at the top seven cards of your deck, and you get to play a Sun Goku GT, Trunks GT, Pan, or Giru 15,000 or less. Uh, this is going to be your ideal turn two play. Uh, this is also going to be what you're going to... The majority of your cards going to be played via this card, uh, just because it's a two-cost, so it's going to be the same or less than uh, most of the battle cards that you're going to be trying to play. So conserving your energy for uh, counterplays or to just play multiple cards in a turn. So the first card you can play with Grand Tour Spaceship is Quick Rush Trunks, 2 cost 15k with Critical, uh, and you can play him via the Grand Tour. Now granted he's a 2 drop, so you could play him by himself either way if you wanted to save the Grand Tour Spaceship, that might be the better option. Uh, we also run 3, or 4, Determined Super Saiyan Sun Goku, he's a 3 drop, 15 with Critical, and if life is 4 or less, he becomes a 5 cost on the board. Then by far the best option for Grand Tour Spaceship is Fearless Pan. It's a 3 cost 15k with Blocker and Barrier. And when she comes into play you get to choose all of your red battle cards in your leader. And they'll get plus 5,000 power and double strike. So then your leader is going to jump up to 25 and double strike crit. That's pretty powerful right there. Plus she's a blocker. So once she's given all of your guys a boost then she's a blocker. That's not going to be able to get, be gotten rid of very easily thanks to that barrier. Now not necessarily an ideal target for the Grand Tour Spaceship, but you could also play the Trunks Deluge of Power. Uh, he's the card that gets an additional 5,000 when you combo on a red battle card. So he's basically another super combo, but I probably wouldn't play him via the Spaceship unless you didn't have another option. Then you could at least have him in active mode and you'd be able to combo with him for uh, that additional combo power. Then we run... For Vegeta, Unyielding Temperament, he's a 3 cost, 15k with critical, and when he's KO'd or placed in the drop area by an opponent's skill, you get to play a 2 cost red battle card from your hand and negate its skills for the duration of the turn. So, with this ability, you could play either of the trunks that we run in this deck, being Quick Rush Trunks or the Trunks Delusion. Ideally, you're going to want to play Quick Rush because he's another 15k crit, so the Vegeta is basically replacing himself. If you need the Trunks for combo power, then you can do that as well, but I would probably play the Quick Rush uh, every single time. Then to add additional crit 
pressure to your opponent and to kind of help nullify uh, the discarding for your leader's ability. We run four burst attack Sun Gohan. He's a three cost critical, 15k, and when he attacks, you get to draw two cards if your hand is four or less. So he kind of goes around in tandem with the leader's ability. You're pitching for the leader. And then you're at four cards, Gohan attacks, you get two more cards, and he's critical, so you're not letting your opponent get any of their cards from their life to their hand. Then we run four, Glory Obsessed, Prince of Destruction, Vegeta. I feel like I just couldn't run a Majin Vegeta deck without this card in it. Uh, he's a three cost 15k, if your leader's red, he can attack active battle cards, and once per turn when he attacks, you switch him back to active and he gains 10,000 power for the duration of the battle. So 25,000 coming at an active battle card on your opponent's board, with an additional 15 coming after that. Then to make it even easier to play those cards, we run four Familial Bonds. It's a two-cost extra card that says if your leader is red, you can choose one red Saiyan with an energy cost of three or less, 15,000 power or less from your drop area, and play it on your board. All of these cards can be played via that. All of the cards that cannot be played for two via the Grand Tour Spaceship can be played for two, uh, with familial bonds, so there's a lot of there's a lot of ways that you can utilize the cards in this deck, and you can play pretty much everything for two energy or less. So it's a really easy way to get a lot of cards on the board very quickly, add a lot of pressure to your opponent, and if they're having to deal with all these battle cards, then they don't have time to really deal with your leader. Then for our finisher card, we have two Super Saiyan three Nappa Saiyan Might. He's probably not necessary in the deck, but he's a t he's a four cost twenty thousand with critical. You only have uh, you can only play him if everything in your deck is red, which obviously it is. And when you play this card from your hand, you can choose a card in your opponent's life and put it in their drop area. So he's going to automatically crit your opponent when he comes into play. And if they're at one, they just lose. If they're not, then you've got a twenty thousand crit coming at your opponent. So it it's situational. Uh, and a lot of times, I mean, that's four energy, so you can play two crit cards for the price of that. But at the same time, he's going to auto crit your opponent, and then he's still got critical on attack. So either way, it's going to come out to about the same outcome. But I, I felt like it was, a, it was a pretty good card. If you wanted a better finisher, then you could probably run something like um, Triple Flash. Because that three drop Goku GT in the deck... When he becomes, when your life is at four or less, he becomes a five cost, which means you could EX evolve Triple Flash on top of him, and you could swing at your opponent for a shit ton of triple attack damage. So that's another option if you wanted to go a little more uh, aggro heavy. But I wanted this to be, you know, crit, uh, centered around uh, critical abilities. Then we've got our super combo. We run four Master Roshi Martial Expert, get that additional ten thousand power and draw a card. And then for defense, we run four after image technique. If your leader is red, you get to choose your leader or your battle card, give it plus 40,000, and give the attacking card a minus 10,000 for the duration of the battle. So pretty much going to ensure that anything that attacks is going to uh, not get through, because that's a 50,000 difference, and that your opponent's not going to combo out of that. Uh, other options for this deck, if your pan wasn't to your liking, then you could also run, you know, the Hidden Power East Supreme Kai for some additional double strike crit damage. You've also got the Furthering Destruction Champa that does that. If you wanted additional combo power, uh, you've got the Kaba's Awakening, the extra 6k. Makes it a lot harder for your opponent to be able to get through their attacks and have to combo additional cards for that. Uh, obviously, the Trunks Delusia Power is better. The only difference is the Kaba can be used on your leader. Uh, if your opponent has additional cards that are just kind of swarming the board, uh, you can put in, is that all you've got, to get a negate that negates the attack, and you can pitch a card to KO to give two uh, battle cards minus 15,000 power, which usually is going to KO some of the lower cost cards. Uh, if you wanted additional defense for your leader, you could also run Unending Awakening. It's a counterattack that uh, gives your red Saiyan leader plus 5,000 for the duration of the turn. So you're going to stop the attack and give your leader a boost in power as well. And if you wanted a little bit more counter power, since the deck does play everything for an energy cost of 2, uh, you could also run Denial of Hope. Uh, if the card you're playing, your opponent is playing has... 20,000 or less power, it's put in the drop area instead. This is a pretty solid card because, like I said, everything is going to be played for two uh, via Grand Tour Spaceship or the Familial Bonds. So you're going to play everything for pretty cheap, so you'll have that extra energy to play your counterattacks and uh, for your extra comboing as well. So 
lot of different options you can play with this. Like I said, Triple Flash is another great option. You could go with uh, the one of the Super Saiyan 3 EX Evolves, but I feel like they are completely inferior compared to Triple Flash. And for this particular deck, Triple Flash is just better. Because uh, you also get that additional two that you'll draw from his ability. And uh, it'll just add more to your combo power to be able to you know push for game with that triple strike damage. But that's going to do it for our Majin Vegeta deck. It's a very crit centered. It's very aggro. It, everything you're playing is low cost. So you don't have to worry about you know not having energy for anything you draw. The only downside to it is... If you don't have anything in play, if you don't have anything in your drop area to play with Familial Bonds, then the card is slightly dead until you do. But uh, Grand Tour Spaceship, you're going to play that before anyways. And with Vegeta's ability, you can discard uh, either the Majin of Vegeta's or the uh, Critical Gohan and then play them back with Familial Bonds. So everything kind of works in tandem together. There's a lot of synergy and... The deck just flows really well because there's not going to be a time you're going to draw something and not have anything to play. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. The deck's a lot of fun. It puts a lot of uh, early pressure on your opponent, but keeping up with the hand advantage is a little bit of an issue, but that's where the Gohan comes into play to kind of help you draw. And again, that's where Triple Flash could come into play to help you draw a little bit more as well. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to test it out, let me know how well it does for you, if you've got any suggestions, if there's any changes you would make uh, or changes that you did make and they worked out better for you. I'd love to hear those in the comments below. But with that, we're going to go ahead and get the frig out of here now, and we'll see you guys in the next video.